Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is a new animated Spider-Man movie released by Sony Pictures so that they can keep the rights to Spider-Man and not sell it all the way off to Marvel because they need something Spider-Man related after the duds that were the Amazing Spider-Man movies and Venom. All of them suck. My opinion. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse focuses on Miles Morales. He's at a new prep school. He's kind of a down-on-his-luck kid. He doesn't have many friends. But an earth-shattering event shatters dimensions, not the video game, and allows other Spider-Men from different dimensions to come into this world. Now, Miles Morales has to get them back to their dimensions, and they have to fend off the Kingpin. The animation style for this movie, I thought, was always weird uh, looking at the trailers. It, it wasn't something that was a stop-motion animation, but it just, it was something different. And now I realize that they kind of made it look like a comic book. And I thought that that was really refreshing for an animated movie. If a comic book came to life and was a cartoon, this is the animation style that I would expect it to be. You even have thought bubbles, speech bubbles, the wham, pow, hey yeah, like that stuff, you know, uh, that appears in the movie. And it was, it was just so refreshing to see a comic book movie take on those comic book tropes. And I gotta say, all the characters in this movie, not one of them is unlikable. This team, this ragtag team of different Spider-Men and Spider-People from different dimensions, they have some of the greatest chemistry I've seen for a team-up movie. And it was just a joy to watch. I really loved uh, Nicolas Cage as Spider-Man Noir. I thought that that was really funny. There's this object he's really obsessed with, and that gets kind of funny after a while. Spider-Ham, that dude's awesome. That was hilarious. I also love the little callbacks to the older Spider-Man movies. Uh, especially there's some callbacks to Spider-Man 2, which is my favorite Spider-Man movie. Uh, some callbacks to that. We saw it in the trailer, you know, the upside down kiss in the rain from the original Rami Spider-Man um, with Tobey Maguire and Kirsten Dunst. That, it's stuff like that where they throw in that nostalgia factor, but it doesn't, it doesn't rely on that to make you like this movie. It relies on the fact that there's camaraderie between these characters and this team of spider people. You tell there's a sense of urgency with this movie. Not just from the studio, but from the characters themselves. Because they have to get back to their dimension or else something will happen to them. And I'm not going to spoil what that's going to be. It's just This is just a refreshing take on a Spider-Man story. Now, I don't know if this is an original story or if this is actually an adaptation from the comic books. Uh, it really does kind of feel like that video game Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, but it's not an adaptation of that video game. If this is an original story, uh, this was produced by Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, who have, who have directed the Lego movie, produced the Lego movie. I believe they did the, the Jump Street movies as well. Uh, and Phil Lord was a co-writer on this movie. I mean, they... They come up with all these great ideas that just sound insane and might not work on paper, but then the execution is always there with these guys, and they do a very good job. And they came up with a story that's that resonates with you. There's a scene here that's similar to Batman that takes place in a cave, and I I was going nuts. I mean, there's there's so many little Easter eggs in this movie that either call back to nostalgia or reference what's going on with Spider-Man now, what's going on in Spider-Man canon. Uh, it's that little stuff, and when and when this team is throwing down with Kingpin, um, it gets really fun. It, there's some creative action sequences here. Definitely a movie that you can root for every single one of these characters. And it's always interesting when worlds collide in a movie like this. And you see the different villains. There's a there's a few different Spider-Man villains in this, and we see different versions of them from different dimensions, like Scorpion. That was that was something really really interesting to see. Um, there's another villain I won't name. Spoiler. She kind of felt like the main villain throughout the movie, um, and that's kind of one of my issues. I'll get into that in a minute. I thought she was really good, and all all of Kingpin's henchmen basically were were great, and just watching. What the the final act of this movie is it's 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 colorful. It's something I've never really seen in a Spider-Man movie before. I mean, you could kind of say that it's similar to the end of Spider-Man Two, but in Spider-Man Two, dimensions didn't shatter and worlds didn't collide. It was just 
metal getting sucked in, you know, uh, from the tritium. At the same time, you really feel for these characters. You care for these characters. You don't want to see them go back to their other dimensions. You're just like, I, I, this movie could go on forever if it really wanted to. And that's a major plus for a movie like this. Not to mention, as I said, when the action goes down, it gets really fun. It gets really exciting. There's a sense of urgency with these characters. And one other aspect of this movie that I felt was very great is when Miles Morales gets his powers, it doesn't take him one or two tries to perfect them. It takes him mostly the entire movie. We don't see that that often in origin superhero movies. It, it, it's really just, oh, hey, I got some new powers. All right, perfected. Go fight crime. That doesn't happen in this movie. Luckily, it takes him time. And sometimes the team doubts him. They're like, you know, you got to learn how to control your powers and how to use your powers. But, I mean, we trust you, but you're not ready. It's a big story about somebody coming of age. And that was something so, that was something so refreshing to see in a Spider-Man movie, especially a superhero movie. If I have any issues with the movie, this might be a nitpick. Um... I would say Kingpin. Not that not that Kingpin is is not fleshed out. It's not that Kingpin is not a good character. He is a really good character. He's a fleshed out villain. I understand his motivations. I love his backstory. It's just I don't think he's in the movie all that much. I wanted to see more of Kingpin. Sometimes it focuses more on his henchmen and this other villain, who it kind of feels like is the main villain. So you don't really get to see much of Kingpin, but Kingpin when he's on screen is awesome and what you learn about him is awesome it's just I wanted a little bit more screen time it seems like that's a common trope now in superhero movies not just from Marvel but DC anything the villains aren't in the movie all that much even if they have a fleshed out backstory and I kind of feel like that makes them slightly less menacing but I mean Kingpin he's still a great villain in this uh, this is one of my favorite movies I have seen all year. This is one of my favorite animated movies. This is probably the best animated movie I've seen all year. I really hope you guys dig this one because this is a totally different Spider-Man movie and I think this is something Sony can springboard off of and make further Spider-Man movies. If they're going to keep most of the rights to Spider-Man, you don't even have to use the Tom Holland Spider-Man. Forget that shit with Venom and bringing Spider-Man in. I hope that does not happen. Just just springboard Spider-Man movies off of this. This is a good starting point for a new animated Spider-Man trilogy. Just go with this. I'm going to give Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. And <laughs> Guys, thank you for watching my review of Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. I'll have some more reviews coming your way soon. You guys are the best. I will leave my link to my website in the description below. There, you can find all my links to my social media accounts. And you can like, comment, and subscribe to this channel at that website and at the subscribe button down below. Thank you for watching. You guys are the best.